Hi, I'm Jim Sperniotopoulos, and today we're going to talk about the three-slice approach to acute CT scans. What kills people with intracranial disease? Mass lesions, cerebral ischemia, cerebral hypoxia, and brain poisoning. The most important things to look for are signs of cerebral ischemia and mass lesions that cause herniation, shift, and increased intracranial pressure. The three key slices that we should observe are the brainstem, the basal ganglia, and the level of the lateral ventricles. We should inspect these for the normal size and position of the ventricles, as well as visibility of the sulci and the demarcation between the gray matter and the white matter. If we look at this brain slice, we can see on the normal brain slices the supracellar cistern filled with cerebrospinal fluid and the fourth ventricle. At the level of the basal ganglia we have the two frontal horns, the third ventricle, and the quadrigeminal plate cistern. And then higher up we see the lateral ventricles and their midline should be in the midline of the patient. If we look at corresponding CT scans we can see the star shape of the supracellar cistern, we can see the temporal horns of the lateral ventricle and the fourth ventricle. At the level of the basal ganglia, we have the frontal horns, the third ventricle, and the smile shape of the, the quadrigeminal plate cistern. We can also see the gray matter of the head of the caudate nucleus, the lenticular nuclei, and on either side of the third ventricle, we have the thalamus. Our third section is at the level of the lateral ventricles. Again, the midline of both lateral ventricles and the septum pellucidum should be in the center. We can also see the gray matter of the caudate nucleus along the lateral margin of the lateral ventricle. If we review the axial images, we want to compare them from side to side and front to back and look for the cortex all the way around. We want to make sure that the sulci are visible, the cisterns are visible, the ventricles are normal, and that we can see the gray-white matter distinction. We can also look at the skull and scalp for signs of trauma. Let's take a look at a case. Here is a patient that presented with the worst headache of their life. This is at the level of the supracellar cistern and the brainstem. Comparison to the normal scan easily demonstrates that we have abnormal hyperattenuation from blood in the supracellar cistern. This is a patient who has had a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Compare the normal scan where we see the normal darkness or low attenuation of spinal fluid in the supracellar cistern. We can see the temporal horns in both the normal and the abnormal patient. And in our patient who has the headache, we can also see a little bit of blood inside of the fourth ventricle. Here is another patient that presents with an obvious mass lesion, subfalsial herniation and shift. In comparison to the normal patient at the level of the basal ganglia, we can see that there is displacement of the pineal gland. We can see that there is an extraaxial collection that is outside the subarachnoid space that is causing subfalsial herniation and shift. This is a patient who had a complex subdural hematoma. Notice that on the abnormal side underlying the extraaxial blood clot, we have compressed the cerebrospinal fluid out of the sulci. Here is another abnormal lesion at the level of the lateral ventricles. Again, we can see a large hyperattenuating extraaxial lesion limited by the coronal and lambdoidal sutures, typical for an epidural hematoma. The ventricles are being compressed and displaced by this extraaxial mass lesion. We have a biconvex extraaxial hematoma consistent with an epidural hematoma. How about this case? This is also at the level of the lateral ventricles. If we compare it to the normal side, we can see sulci all the way around on the normal patient, but on the abnormal patient, if you follow the clock face, we have an absence of sulci overlying the patient's left hemisphere. So the sulci are visible on both sides of the normal patient, but the sulci are invisible and compressed underneath this isodense extraaxial blood clot and isodense subacute subdural hematoma. And for our last case, we have a patient who has abnormal attenuation and abnormal signal intensity of the cerebral cortex, abnormally low signal on the T1-weighted image, 
abnormally high signal gray matter on the T2 weighted image. This is consistent with a large middle cerebellar artery cerebral infarction. So in summary, we can look for the symmetry and we can rock around the clock to look all the way around the cerebral hemisphere and make sure that the sulci are symmetric and visible, the cisterns are visible, and the ventricles are normal. Rock around the clock and make sure you don't miss any critical lesions that will cause brain herniation. This has been Jim Smyrniotopoulos and I have approved this message. Thank you for your attention.